curious what, you know, what your team went through. Obviously now we've seen the hockey situation. How similar was yours and where, where do you guys stand with all that and what'd you go through? You know, it's interesting, Brent, because I, I was, every time, uh, I've always done this my whole career is I, I go back and I look at the previous year's, uh, you know, practice schedule and what I was doing on that date a year ago and, and that sort of thing. It sort of keeps me on track um, with things that need to be covered and, and where we are at that point in our season. And I was looking at my practice cards for in season week eight. And it was way back last year. It was like way back in December, you know, before Christmas or something. And it sort of hit me that we were that far behind. Um, there's no question that that one stretch where we went 43 days and only got to practice 13 times, that that had a huge impact on our, the beginning of our season, how we performed against Colorado, how we performed against Denver the first time around. And, uh, and even, I think, how we performed against Utah State, because at that point we had only played four or five games, and here we were playing conference games on the road. Um, and we only had had our team together as a whole for about a week, not even that, before we played Utah State. Um, so I'm hoping that we'll, we'll start to pick up steam here as we get through the month of January and we catch up a little bit. That was a huge it, it hugely set us back to miss that, miss that much practice time because we, we had one stretch that we missed due to the, the academy being shut down, and then we had another stretch that we missed when we had some positive tests in our program. So, I mean, it is what it is. We're all dealing with it, um, but it's really nice. We're just, we're just fighting like crazy to stay healthy right now. I mean, the team's really working hard at it. And how, is it, how has it impacted the, uh, the lineup? I see like Kaylin Immel coming off the bench. Is that a temporary situation? What, like, I guess how much of what we're seeing is a result of what you guys have gone through because of Well, COVID? there's no question well, the situation no question. with Kaylin was affected by, by COVID. She um, felt strongly that we were um, in a risky environment and, and chose at one point to opt out. Um, and so she wasn't with us for several weeks and she rejoined the program. She, she realized how much she missed it, and she, I think she realized how hard we're working as a team and as a program to stay healthy, and, and she, the combination of her missing playing so much and seeing how hard everybody was working to stay healthy brought her back to us, and, and of course, you know, we, we welcomed her with open arms, and, and, uh, but she did not rejoin the program after being absent for, gosh, I want to say three or four weeks, um, because not only had there been the time that she opted out, but she'd also gone home for the holidays and then and then had to serve a you know the quarantine time when she came back. So she ha she only has been practicing with us a couple of weeks. So I I I mean I'm there's a certain amount of loyalty I have to the players who stayed stayed here through the holidays and as long as they're doing a good job. Um, I want to give them sort of the first nod, but certainly when Kaylin gets her game up to speed, she's going to be somebody who's competing for starting spot, and, and we know that to her, to her credit, it's honestly not that important to her. She just is so happy to be out there playing again and to be with her teammates and to be playing basketball, and, and I'm, I want more than anything for this experience to be a positive thing for her, for Emily Conroe, for Cassidy Huffman, because this is it. We've got to play as many games as we can so that, so that those three seniors can, can just finish. They've given so much to this program, um, and I want, them, I want so badly for them to finish the year on a positive note and to get to play this sport because this is probably going to be it for them. You know, we're not like other schools. They can't, they can't come back for another year um, and, and have the option of doing that. They can't transfer and they could potentially be grad transfers, but then they have to go to graduate school, and that only happens for you know a small percentage. It's always open to cadets. Uh, that possibility is always open to cadets, but it, but it doesn't happen for that many cadets. And so we don't know if any of those three. Emily, I think, is is uh, going to pursue graduate school, um, but then but then even if you go to graduate school, well, you have to be able to make the team, you know. <laughs> so, and and not too many programs are open to having somebody who's only there for one year just you know suddenly stepping in so this is probably going to be it for the three of them so there we want to give it give them the best experience possible
I have a couple questions about Riley Snyder for you. It seems like she, since she got to the academy, she's been contributing for you even as a freshman. So what do you like about Riley's game? Riley Snyder's a really good player, <laughs> and um, and and she can score the basketball. Um, what I love about her is is it, sh she's always upbeat. You know, it takes a it takes a lot to to get her down. She just she just keeps. She just keeps on trucking no matter what. She takes a beating. Um, I, I feel like the, the officials have been letting people get away with doing, being very, very physical with her. I think the word has gotten out, oh, hey, you know, the way to take care of Riley Snyder is, is just to be really physical with her. She has to learn to handle that. She's definitely become the target player on our team, the one that the best defensive player on the other team is being put on. Um, and she and, and she's uh, having to deal with a ton of attention, um, and some and like I say, some very physical play. Uh, she she doesn't let it get her down, but I think she has to learn how to, as a player, how to make people pay for that. Um, so I'm hoping that because this is a new experience for her this year. I mean, everybody always knew she was a good player for us, but she really didn't come on big time until uh, the second half of the conference season last year, and then she's been huge for us this year. Um, and, I, and I believe that her game has improved, her overall game's improved. She's rebounding better, she's playing better defense, she's passing the ball better. Um, you know, she's, a, she's just a huge part of, of who we are, uh, but I'd sure like to help her out some more. Uh, um, you know, there was a reason that, that she went I think it was three for 15 in the second game against Boise. She was just taking, she was taking a, it was just a lot of work. And I think us playing our fourth game in eight days and her being on the floor and having to deal with so much um, affected, you know, her, her shooting percentage and some other things in that second game, for sure. And I know for some players, just kind of being the target of the other team can actually, they can feed off that and it can kind of help their game, maybe help their confidence. But I know you said Riley kind of needs to work on that, but how do you else do you see her growing um, from you know when she came to the academy? She's much more vocal. She's much more willing to um, you know hold her teammates accountable because Riley's a uh, she's a sweet kid. <laughs> you know, it's it's not in her nature to to uh, want to beat your brains out. You know she's competitive, um, but she's just a very nice person, and so I think she's had to learn to to, um, uh, like you say, to see that as sort of a, almost an insult. Okay, you're gonna, if you're going to play that way against me, boy, am I going to make you look silly. And she almost has to take that approach as, a, as opposed to just being, you know, a trooper. She's kind of a trooper about it. She just keeps, keeps trying, keeps trying, keeps working. But I think she, she, it would help her to be almost a little more, I don't want to say nasty, but you know, kind of like, oh, okay, all right. You want to do? You want to try that? Okay. <laughs> so I'm, ho I'm hoping we can get her to see it like that and and not be so nice about it. <laughs> First, I can't tell you how much I miss our post game <laughs> interviews, and especially it would be so much nicer to talk to you this year how well your team is playing. I mean, let's be honest. Down the stretch at Utah State, things go differently in both of those games you could be three and one yes, in conference yes right? don't yeah. remind me Vince. Uh, rachel <laughs> <laughs> remember i'm the optimist rachel and i talking to after the game after that first boise state game and coach your team i haven't seen that in a long time maybe if ever you played defense out of your mind you everything you put up was going in is this what you've been waiting for for the last well certainly years? that game was yeah <laughs> yes and and I, I I love the fact that you are so positive, Vince, because um, because boy, there were some years we needed that. You know, <laughs> we needed to be always able to see the the silver lining. Um, I I know we want the U I wish we had the Utah State ba games back again, um, but they were also very good learning experiences for us because I feel like what we learned from that team is is sometimes you just have to want it more than the other guy. And that was kind of what Utah State did to us. I, I just felt like they just wanted those games so badly. And maybe we were, you know, we, were, we had beaten Denver. We had, we had a huge win over Portland State. Maybe we were thinking we didn't have to be our old scrappy, you know, 
fight fight tooth and nail selves. And and when you're on the road in a weird environment, sometimes you do. And I think that that's what is we're in a transition time now. We we know we're pretty good. We know we can put together games like that one against Boise State, and we know those things will happen. Can we win games when those things aren't happening? Can we win games when we're not banking in threes? You know, <laughs> can, can can we win games when when the other guy is is you know clawing our eyes out like like both Utah State did and Boise State did in the second game? They just came after us defensively. Just came after us. Um, can we still, can we, we know we can win and now it's almost like we're disappointed if we think it's not going to happen and we've got to, we've got to grow up from that. We've got to understand that, that we still have the power to, to change these things and we've got to figure out what it's going to take on a night when things aren't going great, you know, when, when the bounces pop up in the other guy's hand instead of our hand. That, that was virtually that kind of a turnaround between um, Wednesday and Friday, it was really funny. It was like you know, every loose ball seemed to pop into our hands on Wednesday and ended up in a layup. And then on Friday, every loose ball seemed to pop out in their hands. And so, so how do you fi- how do you fight when the when things aren't going your way and against a good team and still come out come out with the W? So well, that's what we're working on. Well, it's fun to watch. And I have one more quick one. You've coached a lot of basketball. You've coached a lot of players. For the size of Brianna Autry Thompson, <laughs> pound for pound. how does she rank in some of the players that you've coached? Yeah. She's, I think she's definitely the the best under five six player I've ever coached. <laughs> no, I I am really proud of of how far Bree's game has come. Um, talk about somebody who's just just grown so much over the years. Uh, you know, we knew she was a good little player when she got here, but. Of course, she had a lot, a lot to learn. But um, she's just trying. She's our, she's our heart and soul. And I, in a lot of ways, how she goes, we go. And that's that's a lot on on a on a player, um, and particularly a, a player who's who's at her at her heart a pretty sensitive kid. And so um, she's learning to to bear that responsibility. Um, she's not. She's willing to take it on and and to keep working on it. So. I just think, and and she's got to get better. You know, she knows she has to get better at shooting the three, so people play her honest because they know she's going to go to the, go to the basket uh, nine times out of ten, given a choice. You know, um, so I think she she's been working on hitting the outside shot better. Uh, she when she got here, she was strictly an open court point guard. In the open court, great. Any other time, you weren't sure. And now she's learned she's learned to direct her team in the half court. She's learned to find her shooting opportunities, her scoring opportunities. Um, she's always been a very good defensive player, but I've almost shifted that responsibility over to Sierra Winters just just so that Brianna doesn't have so much on her plate. Um, but she's always been a very good defensive player when she sets her mind to it, too. I just wanted to kind of dive into some numbers real quick. Uh, I'm really impressed uh, on the defensive end of the floor in the last four games. I think the eight, the first five games, you were giving up close to 82 points per game. The last four, correct me if I'm wrong, I just did the math, you're giving up 69. Um, it feels like probably a lot of that has to do with consistency of being able to practice and get in the gym, but it feels like that buy-in has really taken a step up on the defensive end. Um, and how much is that something you guys are stressing every day in practice? How much have you been working on that? That's a really good observation, Rachel, because um, that was what sort of got left behind when we missed so much practice time. We knew we were going to try to put in some new offensive systems, and we felt like we had a pretty experienced group, and so we could shift the emphasis from defense. I've always been a, a defensive coach, defensive-minded coach, that we could we could switch to spending more time on offense, and that's what we did in the preseason. And we had, you know, we had the month of September to work on with them on some things, and it was all it was all offense. Well, we didn't know we were going to get get that much time taken away from us later. And it's and it's interesting because some of our uh, veteran players had actually come into my office at one point back in I want to say October, and said, "How come we're not spending?" as much time on defense it, it like bothered them and they and they knew we weren't very good at it um 
and I explained it to him and all that. And, and then, you know, the shutdown came. That we were going to get to it. We were going to get to it. Well, we finally got to a point then uh, after um, after the, Den the Denver, Colorado uh, series. Well, even Western Colorado, which um, I wasn't able to coach at because I was quarantined at the time. And, and that was when I really came in and just said, this has got to stop. We've got to start playing defense. We know we can score the ball probably as well as we've ever been able to. We've got to start playing defense. And, and they, they really buckled down, and we were able to put a focus on it and start getting after it and, and, and have been getting better and better. I, I thought we certainly – again, I felt like our defense requires you to be not only totally bought in, but you've got to work your tail off. And so there's really nothing in between. So your heart's got to be in it. And so I think when we got a little, we got down towards the end against Boise and let them score some easy stuff. But we defended them pretty well until we just got frustrated with our lack of scoring, I think, and sort of dropped our guard. And then they scored, they got, they got some easy stuff down the stretch there. But yes, you are correct. We're doing better. <laughs> um, looking forward to, to Wyoming, um, a team that I've been able to follow pretty closely the last few years, but look a little bit, they look a little bit different, at least from an offensive standpoint. Um, what's, what's this series looking like to you and, and what can we expect? I don't know that we've ever beaten, it'd be something, maybe Marcus, you know, if we've ever won at Wyoming. I don't believe we've ever won at Wyoming. We've beaten Wyoming, but I don't know if we've ever won there. Uh, really hard to play them on their own court. Talk about a team that it, it seems like they're night and day when they're at home and when they're on the road. Um, they are they're an outstanding offensive team. They can all shoot the ball. Um, their system is tough to defend, even with pre and especially with pressure defense. They're missing two key players from a year ago, particularly their big kid. Um, their big kid in the middle you just had to pay so much attention to her and then they got these shooters out on the perimeter and you can't if you if you drop too hard to help they're going to kick it out to one of those shooters and a lot of tough choices you had to make they they don't have her anymore but they still have you know quality people quality players um and they have a system they have a system they've been running that system since i've since i've been here even though they've had a coaching change because their current head coach was the assistant with their previous head coach who was there for a long time, Joe, um, and, and they're great people, and, and I have tremendous respect for them, and we just uh, hope that we can put something together out there and see if we can win at Wyoming. <laughs>